It's Christmas Eve and the shops are just closed and you have just realized, uh oh, there are some presents I still have to buy. What are you gonna do? Well, you're gonna go to a petrol station, aren't you? Because they are probably still gonna be open. Like this co-op right behind us, which is open 24 hours a day on a rather busy road, even on Christmas Eve. Now we're gonna have a little look in here and it's not a challenge between the two of us this time, as you may have seen in another <laughs> segment. <laughs> No, this is desperation. Um, so, what are we going to do? Well, we're on a mission and we're going to set ourselves a target, I think, of probably around about £7.50. We don't want to go over that to see what we can get that is a reasonable present for someone that you bought at a petrol station. Now, we've got this co op here and then we also have a BP with a Marks and Spencer and we're going to go there afterwards. But let's check out the co op first. Well, I'm afraid there wasn't a great selection of stuff in there, but we did manage to find one item and it only cost three pounds. And I think that anybody would like to receive this for Christmas. Look, a box of roses, but this is something I've not seen before. It's a square box. Oh, wow. Yeah, for three pounds. Look at this. Yeah, because usually they're upright and they're that funny shape, the way that you wrapped that I didn't like that present one. last year. Very hard to wrap. So maybe they have brought out this a gift picked for you oh, because it is sweet. so easy to wrap okay now let's see what M&S has to offer hmm I have to get my sparks card out look we're at M&S now it's a BP station and it's just a few yards away from where we were before and well you know what you usually get at an M&S shop on the high street so we're gonna see if the M&S at the petrol station offers the same range that would make a good Christmas present. Let's take a look. Well, I'm really happy with what we got. Look, look at this. It is a shortbread light up lantern. And it says all butter Scottish shortbread with a festive white LED tea light. Now we do have a golden color one at home that we got at the M&S. Last um, time. Uh, yeah, two or three years ago. And this is a lovely little silver one. It's a different shape. Oh, look at and all I the think, festive stuff. Again, anyone would be very happy to get this um, as a Christmas present. Now, as a bonus, I did mention about the Sparks card. They say they don't take it. However, they did give me this. What is this? It is BP Me. And you know how I love my loyalty cards. So it says that every time that you fill up with petrol at least one litre, or spend at least a pound in a BP shop that is part of the scheme, you get points. And they're also going to give me 200 bonus points the next time I spend anything at one of these shops. And just for registering the card online, uh -huh. I will get 500 points worth two pounds 50. So I think it's happy Christmas to us as well. Isn't happy it? Christmas. Yay, we're quids in. <laughs> Perhaps you have heard of the NORAD Santa Tracker. Well, if you haven't, I'm going to tell you all about it. On Christmas Eve, you can track Santa as he makes his journey all around the world, delivering presents to all the very good little boys and girls, and maybe older boys and girls, men, women, as well. <laughs> and, well, he does visit us. Yes, he does. Now, what is NORAD? Well, it is the Homeland Defence Department of the United States. It says 24 hours a day, 365 days a year, NORAD tracks everything that flies in and around North America in defense of our homelands. NORAD has been tracking Santa since 1955, when a young child accidentally dialed the unlisted phone number of the Continental Air Defense Command, CONAD, Operations Center in Colorado Springs, Colorado, believing she was calling Santa Claus after seeing a promotion in a local newspaper. Now, 
It is now tracking Santa down. At the time of recording, we're quite a few days off, but come Christmas Eve, or let's say the 23rd of December, you will see that it says one day, one hour, two minutes and 56 seconds, until he reaches the point where you are, because it will track um, you down via your Wi-Fi or your mobile phone um, allowance service. And there's more that you can do on this app as well. You can explore the North Pole, check out the theatre, the arcade, the library and NORAD HQ. So all you have to do is go on to the Google Play Store or the Apple Store and just search for NORAD, that's N-O-R-A-D, the NORAD Santa Tracker. Thank you for watching our show today. You must be liking it so far. If you haven't subscribed yet, then please subscribe. Santa goes to such lengths to visit everyone around the world every Christmas Eve that it is only fair that he receives a little nourishment along the way. Do you leave out some traditional treats for Santa and, of course, his reindeer, especially Rudolph with that red nose? Well, these are the traditional items that you leave out for Santa. You've got a mince pie. No, I love a mince pie as well, so I'm sure that Santa will really enjoy this. And there's a carrot for the reindeer. Now, you might want to leave out a whole bag of carrots for all of them, otherwise Rudolph will just have the one and the others might be a little bit jealous and of course Santa shouldn't be slaying and drinking drinking what drinking and slaying drinking and slaying but um, a little whiskey you know it'll just help him along the way because it's very cold on Christmas Eve and of course his sleigh is magic and the reindeer are in charge anyway. They are really the ones that are driving it. So I think Santa really does deserve a whiskey on Christmas Eve. Well, I suppose there's only one way to find out if we have done the correct thing and that is to ask Santa and the reindeer themselves. So let's find out. Ho, ho, ho! It's Christmas Eve and I've just been to see Paul and Marcus, and I have left them some lovely presents. Hmm, but did they leave anything for me? Oh yes, look at this, a mince pie, my favourite at this time of year. Oh, 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 ha, 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 oh, 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 and a whiskey as well. Oh, and look, there's a, a lovely carrot sitting for my reindeer. Let me go and get Rudolph. Hang on. Rudolph. Rudolph! Yeah, I'm afraid Rudolph's not available, but I'm Prancer. Oh, look! A lovely carrot that will help me on my way. Paul and Marcus, thank you so much for leaving out all these lovely things for Santa and for us reindeer on Christmas Eve. Merry Christmas, everyone! Merry Christmas! Where do you go for great views like this? Our show, of course. Ah, absolutely. So please subscribe. Christmas time is coming. It's time we must be good. For Santa's watching every day and we forgot we should clean our room and wash the car, help mom with every chore, for presents we are after, and a good one we must score. No time to chat, no time to play, there's dishes to be done. There will be time later for us to have some fun. Who fancies a snowball fight?
Well, we may not have snow at Christmas, but you can still have a snowball. It's a drink and it's made with that most traditional of Christmas drinks, Advocate. And it can be quite difficult to find sometimes, especially outside of season. But around Christmas time, most supermarkets should sell it. Now, let's just talk about what it is, Paul Advocate. Do you know what it is? Something made with egg yolks. Um, yeah, I think it is. Uh, it says it's produce of Holland, and it's uh, this is from Warnings, and it says Urban Warning established in 1616 is the largest manufacturer of quality avocado in the world. It says for the perfect snowball, take two shots of Warnings avocado and pour it into a long drink glass with ice, and add the juice of a quarter of a lime, and top up with lemonade and it contains barn eggs. Yes, it says once opened, keep refrigerated and consume within six months. Shake well before use and always please drink responsibly. So we're following a recipe which has various quantities of what you need. So we've already filled our two glasses with ice and we want 15 ml of lime juice. And I've already poured out the quantity for both of them in this glass. So we'll pour half into each one. Like so. And like so. And then we want to pour the advocate and our lemonade. So we'll start with the lemonade. And we are using 50 ml of sparkling lemonade. So we'll pour half of it in there. And half of it in there. Let me just make sure it's, it's correct. Now we get to open the advocate. Would you like to open it, Paul? Now we've got a measuring jug here and we are going to use 50 ml of advocate. So I'm going to measure each serving out as 25 ml. Let's have a smell of this. It's not potent at all, smell it. Yeah, it's fine. It smells kind of eggy. Yeah, yeah it's got eggs <laughs> in it. Okay, so let's pour this out. Oh gosh. Yeah, it's it's like custard. That's about twenty-five. So a little more. So how much do we need? It's twenty-five. Uh, oh no, um, it's fifty mil. <laughs> sorry, fifty mils. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Fifty mils. Yeah, sorry, I was going to short changes because I'd been doubling all the um, <laughs> quantities for the other things. So there we go. There's one. Gosh, it's very cloudy, isn't it? And <laughs> here's the other one. Are you sure that's 50? Yeah, it's good enough. Pour it in. Now what you want to do is then stir the glasses and we are using a chopstick and it's until the glass feels cold on the outside because the advocate, when we opened it, hasn't it hasn't been chilled. Uh, but of course, once you've opened the bottle, it will be chilled because you've got to keep it refrigerated. So the glass does feel cold on the outside there. Should I do that? And do the one. other one, yeah, yeah. Oh, now there's one very important ingredient that I nearly forgot about. It doesn't go into the glass, so we're all right. Yeah, that's feeling cold. Why it's funny because when all the ingredients went in, I thought, oh, it's not going to even fill up this glass. But it has. I guess maybe the okay. ice is starting to melt a bit already. Okay, so we want to finish it off. Look, one of these. Look, look at that. A lovely cherry. Ooh, a cherry on top. So we'll stick that there. Hopefully it won't fall in. Uh, no, I did say it was supposed to be a, what is that, a maraschino cherry. wasn't able to find those. So these these are glassy cherries that you can get at the, um, the, ooh, the baking department of any good supermarket. Okay, so grab your cherry, Paul, so to speak. And then what? Well, eat it, just eat it first. Mmm! I love cherries. Glassy cherries. You get them in cakes. Okay, cheers. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. Let's see what this um, is like. Oh! 
Oh, wow. Very sweet. It's very limey, isn't it? Do you know what? It's got an aftertaste of ice cream. It does kind of taste like ice mm. cream. Wow, this is one of, the, one of the most unusual things I've ever had. Because I've heard of an advocate before. And I thought, oh, you wouldn't just drink it. Um, neat. Do you know... Do you know what? This kind of looks like eggnog. Where yeah. there's like... That's what I'm thinking of. Where there's like alcohol in the egg mixture. Yeah. I've never eggnog. actually had eggnog before. I reckon that it would be tasting mm. like this. Mm. So it starts off with that kind of... Well, you said sweet, but I'm getting more of a bitter taste. A bitter from the lime. And then... There's the afterkick, which is sweeter and tastes like melted ice cream. Which is a weird mixture, if you ask me. And what I can't taste at all is the alcohol. And it is a 17.2% volume, so just be warned. You know, maybe a few of these on Christmas Day. You might not even see Boxing Day. <laughs> well, we're going to finish these up. Merry Christmas, everyone! Merry Christmas! Merry Christmas. Oh, I hear jingle bells. Maybe I should pour the rest of this. <laughs> mm. Waste not what not. Too strong, right? Maybe chug it straight from the bottom. Really? No. No. So that goes in the fridge then. Keep the recipe. Mm, but it's all dirty now. Okay, I'll stick it in the drawer. Should we wipe it off?